Javad, let's begin with the investigation because I was going through some of the findings. And the key thing is that you folks are quite convinced that the Iranians intentionally shot down Flight 752. Why are you so convinced of that? Well, yeah, yeah. I think, as you said, uh, the Iranian government on January 8th amid significant military tension between Iran and U.S. kept their airspace open deliberately at Iran's Supreme National Security Council, which, which, which is a heinous crime. In addition to that, we do believe that the downing of flight PS752 couldn't be a horrific combination of some coincidences. The technical capabilities of Tor M1 missile system, the experience of the operator of the Tor M1 missile system, the air defense unit that shot down PS752, and his uh, exp expertise, he, 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 he is the instructor of the Tor M1 missile system at different university and also in Syria. Uh, the systematic destruction of electronic devices, this is the one of the most important key findings of this report, that after the crash, the electronic devices were subjected to a systematic uh, de uh, destruction, and this is based on professional experts' opinion here in uh, Canada. So it's obvious that Iran is hiding something, and also other key findings of the, this report suggest that uh, misidentification claims and uh, misalignment claims are implausible. Mm -hmm. Iran's, uh, Iran claims that the uh, operator couldn't distinguish between a cruise missile and flight PS-752, but uh, the uh, flight PS-752 and a cruise missile are very different in various parameters like radar cross-section, speed, altitude, uh, and motion profiles. So, Javad, let me jump in there, because maybe for folks at home, they would be hearing all this technical information, and it might be difficult to decipher, but essentially, you're saying the people who were working that night were far too sophisticated and experienced to have just made a silly error, a horrible, horrible error. But my question then becomes, well, then why would Iran do that? Through your investigation, what would Iran possibly stand to gain by doing this, by ending up taking the lives of 176 people? Yeah, very good question. First of all, first of all, we need to know that Iran's investigation was incomplete, misleading, and shambolic, as Rolf Godel and uh, United Nations Special Rapporteur Dr. Agnes Kalamar said that. So it is obvious that Iran is uh, hiding something. The reason for the intentional downing of flight PS752, uh, the answer is that we cannot read the minds of criminals. It, and we uh, should consider this point that the Iranian government is not a reasonable or logical government, and they can do it any stupid thing, but based on experts' opinion, there are some scenarios uh, for intentional downing of flight PS752, like uh, based on asymmetric war to avoid having further tension between Iran and U.S. by doing something crazy and unexpected based on asymmetric war strategy. But at the end, I think all of us, the Canadian government, families, other affected countries, all of us uh, on the same page that there are numerous unanswered questions mm -hmm. still. So that's why we are demanding impartial international uh, investigation. I want to get to that investigation in just a moment, but I did want to pick up on something that you all presented during your findings earlier in the week. And again, a warning to folks at home, some of these details are very disturbing. I was very disturbed, Javad, when you were talking about some of the families of the victims, when they had the bodies of their loved ones returned to them, those families who did DNA testing realized that the bodies that had been returned to them were, in fact, not those of their family members. They were of someone else that they couldn't identify. Why in the world? What, what do you know of this? Why would this be the case? Why weren't their bodies returned? to their families. Yeah, it was a very painful key finding for families and had some 
terrible psychological consequences for families. It clearly shows that how the Iranian government is reckless and why we shouldn't trust the Iranian government. From the very beginning, um, we said that this government is not a normal government and it's not trustable. But on that time, after shortly after the downing of flight PS752, the Canadian government told some families that the Iranian government is doing good for identification of bodies. But our finding clearly shows that the Iranian government deceived the, uh, the whole world and the vast majority of the families. So you mentioned the Canadian government there, and they carried out their own fact-finding mission. And they have sent a notice to Iran, which Iran has not responded to. But your organization has also expressed frustration with the way the Canadian government is handling this file. And what is your frustration? Uh, just one thing uh, regarding the Canadian forensic team report. I think the biggest mistake on that report is that they said that we didn't find any solid evidence that it was uh, intentional. But the other side of the coin is that you didn't find any solid evidence that it wasn't intentional. So there are still numerous questions, and we are not done with the investigation. Regarding our frustration with the Canadian government, uh, unfortunately, this is our opinion that some people inside the Canadian government prefers to choose the easiest option, like closing the case by a shallow apology and just compensation. But that, what matters to families is uh, truth and justice. And uh, I, I cannot describe my disappointment and frustration regarding the RCMP. RCMP shooting down a civilian airliner over an international airport is a criminal act. Why RCMP doesn't open a criminal case in Canada? Why RCMP doesn't cooperate properly with Ukrainian criminal case? Why Canada doesn't support families and Ukraine uh, in opening a case in international criminal court? Why Canadian government itself open a uh, criminal case in uh, ICC. Uh, I think the history, Natasha, the history will judge us. We should care about the truth and justice, not just choosing the easiest option available. But still, we do believe that uh, the new foreign minister in the Canadian government, I think she she can, uh, the Honorable Melanie Julie, she can definitely play an important role in pursuing justice and truth if she tries to choose a different approach from the former foreign minister. We hope, we hope we can have a good uh, collaboration with the Canadian government, especially the new foreign minister. Like what we had with uh, Honorable Champagne as the foreign minister, I think in a nutshell, families want impartial international investigation. And I think two years is enough for waiting for Iran. At the same time, focusing on criminal aspects of the downing of flight PS752, the Canadian government and other affected countries should put pressure on Iran. I mean, the Iranian government, not Iranian people. It's, it's really questionable for families and many people why the Canadian government doesn't uh, designate IRGC as a terrorist entity in Canada, despite the Canadian Parliament motion recognized uh, the whole IRGC as a terrorist in entity. Uh, I cannot describe our pain over the past two years, and this pain is really killing us a little by little, and, it, it, and the Canadian government's slowness in efficiency made it more terrible. Javad, I know that you're going through pain. We've spoken many times over the past two years. I want to thank you again for your time. I'm very sorry once again for the loss that you have suffered. Thank you for making time, and I wish you luck. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Javad Suleimani is the chair of the fact-finding committee of the Association of Families of Flight PS-752 victims.